one and all. Uh, welcome to our service of celebrating the baptism of our Lord. I hope you are staying well and that things are in your favor as we continue to go through this new year. Uh, know that you are blessed and we pray for you each day. Let us begin our worship. The vast, vast expanse of sky stretches in praise. The waters and streams cry out in longing. The earth now hardened incubates life, and we, your people, await it. Let us pray. For the coming of this new day and the opportunity to begin again, for the chance to think anew and the invitation to revisit and amend for the ways we have found refuge and challenge within this congregation and the community of Christ around the world for our bodies through which we know and celebrate life for this glorious complicated interconnected world that is our home. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God. Amen. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, uh, the children's sermon today, we will spray you with water. Now, if you don't like to be sprayed, don't worry about it, because it's not going to reach you. But we celebrate this day, and we use water for a wide variety of things. And so as we look at our use of water, what kinds of things come to mind? Well, naturally, you wash with it, you uh, bathe, you swim, you use it to water the plants, to cook, and to drink. Because all living things need water. And so when we have water at church, we naturally think of baptism beyond all those other uses of water. So today, we recognize the baptism using our baptismal pump. And so we recognize the baptism of Jesus. And he was baptized in a river by John the Baptist. And Jesus stepped into the middle of the river where John was and was waiting. John was waiting for him there. John dumped Jesus under the water. And when Jesus came up, the heavens opened. And the Holy Spirit came down. And God said, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So when are we baptized? Well, we're baptized whenever we uh, are blessed and make that decision or our parents make that decision for us. And so we're baptized and washed with water and God's words. So through baptism, we become children of God members of God's family, and God calls us beloved. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for washing us with water and your word so we can become your children. Amen. And so, if you were here today, I would invite you to put your fingers in the water and remember your baptism. As we come together for our time of prayer, I've heard some of your concerns and uh, we will lift them up as we pray today, given our current situation. So let us pray.
even as Jesus waded into the water to follow your purposes and to be fully identified with us. You draw us into the water and pour upon us your gifts of grace. Baptism's waters signify your love and promise. Those waters also convey a symbol of power and power your spiritual gifts. Plunge us into these life-giving waters each day. O tender one who gave shape to creation and who appointed us stewards of its care, we confess that in wild abandon and willful ignorance, we have run roughshod over the earth and our fellow creatures. Renew within us a right measure of ourselves and our place in your world. Help us to recalibrate from gluttony to gratitude, from cavorting to celebration, from domination to dwelling that we may join in your great chorus of shalom. Teach us, O God of every nation, to see every question of national policy in the light of our faith, that we may check in ourselves and in others every passion that makes for war, all ungenerous judgment, all promptings of self-assurance, all presumption and presumptuous claims. Grant us insight to recognize the needs and aspirations of all people, and remove our suspicions and misunderstandings, that we may honor all people in Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh God, we lift up those that are on our hearts and minds. And so we continue to pray for Linda and we pray for Pat Blake and for all of our members. Bless each one, as well as all those that visit us online. Give them your strength and your courage and your peace. Oh God, we pray for our nation as we have undergone different challenges. Help us to be loving and caring people. Help us to show your love in all that we do and everywhere we go. Give us strength. Give us guidance. Give us your light and your truth. And let them guide us. Through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this world and our Savior, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. thanks for those that have continued to send in their offerings. We ask that you continue uh, the good work so that our ministry and missions can continue on. 
And so let us pray. Out of your abundant love, you have given us more than we can possibly imagine. We offer these gifts and pledge ourselves, trusting that abundance so that we may build just and sustainable lives together, glorify you, and giving life to the world, gracious God. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from, the, from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gloria. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your holy scriptures whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with a ready willingness to hear its truth, heed its call, and enact its lessons. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today I'm going to read two lessons. The first being that of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Our second reading is taken from Psalm, chapter 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, and the Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks its pieces of cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. Syrian 
like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits a throne over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. This message from Genesis is in the midst of chaos. God spoke and created order and called all good. How often have we had to deal with chaos in our lives? Oh yes, recently we have dealt with chaos. Have we truly looked to the Lord for guidance, for direction? Have we shown our love of God as God has shown his love for us? Recognize in the scripture that evil is not connected to darkness. As some people have taken that scripture and utilized it inappropriately, thinking that the dark, the black, are evil. It simply separates darkness and light. Our scripture from Psalm is the sevenfold the voices of the Lord, which underscores the power of God, especially in this imagery of a storm, which connects Genesis and Mark and the voices associated with water. As we have talked about water today with the children. And so water is a component, a significant component within our lives that we need in order to survive, that we need to carry on with the basic portions of our life. So this imagery of a storm, you have to think about what do we see in storms? How does the scripture really relate to how we view storms? Well, many times people see and hear a storm coming and they start to run for cover. Oh yeah, in significant storms we do that to protect ourselves. But have we ever taken the time to carefully examine the storm? To look out and See how beautiful it can be. I've seen lightning storms from afar and truly enjoyed its majestic power, its beauty. Have you ever done that? Oh yeah, we get frightened by the thunder and we tell how far the storm is away from us by counting between the lightning strikes and the thunder that roar? Do you become afraid of it because of the sound? Or do you recognize the power that's behind it? Oh yeah, and at some point we start to feel that water that comes from that storm. And how powerful it can be. That it can actually create floods and destroy things around us. How powerful water can be in our lives. And so this imagery of God's power and how we need to glorify the power of God in our midst. 
So it reminds us of God's great power. And God's voice, which overwhelms the symbols of strength. You'll note the talk about the mountains and the cedars and all the different components that typically have great strength in our lives. That symbolism of how we see mountains and how great they are, but knowing that God controls them. Do we realize how powerless we are as we face the problems we face? Do we know that God is truly in charge and God truly wants us to know that God is there, the all-powerful, the all-knowing? And how that is important in our lives and our ability to recognize God's power and strength. But more importantly, the scripture helps us recognize God's love and God's concern for each and every one of us when we recognize God's strength and power. It gives us confidence. And God has confidence in each and every one of us if we're willing to turn over to Him our oh, God's power encourages God's people, giving hope for peace. And if there's ever a time that all of us have been truly in need of God's peace, it's right now. As we examine the creation story and as we examine this song of Paul's writing in Psalms, do we recognize God's love, God's ability to be in control of our lives, to show God's love and God's strength in all that is around us? The next time that you experience the rains, the next time you experience looking at the mountains and the tall trees, recognize God's love and God's power and how much God wants you to be at peace in God's world. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the many blessings you have given us. For these words of encouragement, help us to utilize them for our everyday lives. Help us to remember our baptism and reconnect with baptismal waters. Help us to truly be at peace with one another, to show your love in all that we do and everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now go forth. Knowing that the love of God is with you, so go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and always. Amen. Be safe. Take care of yourself and those around you and show them God's love in all that you do.